Here at Paddy Power, we're the home of the Money Back Special, with some incredible offers every single week. Check out the website or app today. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, begumbleaware.org. Hello and welcome to this Monday Review Postcast. I'm Maddie Plow. I'm joined by James Hill in the studio. We have Paul Binfield back on the line from Paddy Power to look over the weekend's action. We had good racing from Warwick, Kempton and indeed Punchestown yesterday. Uh, some Cheltenham clues on offer and maybe even a Grand National one as well. So plenty to get stuck into. Uh, let's start off with Warwick then. The classic chase was their feature and Kimber like Candy was an impressive winner in the end. Uh, I mean, Jimmy, he indicated he could be capable of this sort of performance when second in the beach chase. Uh, that was over the Grand National Fences, so that will stand him in good stead if he were to go that way. What sort of, I mean, would you think he's the ideal type for the Grand National at this stage? Yeah, well, he's got a very similar profile now to what one for Arthur had in 2017. Indeed. Ran very well in the beach chase, won the classic chase, and then went on to win the National. So, uh He's a sim very similar type, young, improving horse, strong stayer, good jumper, um, got all the right credentials, really. Just you wonder whether he's good enough, that's all. I mean, he is improving, but mm. uh, the, the quality of horse now that you have, have to win the national with is, is, is pretty high these days. Uh, but, you know, I have to say I, I liked everything about him at Warwick uh, because they won a proper gallop. Um, he got a bit warm beforehand, but other than that, I thought he stuck at it really well. Uh, he's had to stay every yard and he, he, he did it true and proper. Yeah, he certainly did pick up really well, didn't he? Uh, Captain Chaos set that really strong pace under Harry Skelton. Uh, Binners, what price did you go for the big one? Well, we went 25 to 1, Maddie, but um, got to have a reservation. Um, it looks like the horse probably needs soft ground. That's what Tom Lacey said on Saturday, so I'd probably put off you anti-post bets until we know it's going to come up soft in Liverpool. Yeah, that's a very interesting thought, as is what you said, Jimmy, because these days the National is a different race, isn't it? I mean, with horses like Tiger Roll winning it, you need a better quality horse these days, is that fair to say? Yeah, you definitely need a better quality. Just to get in. Yeah, well, he'll definitely get in now. Mm. Um, he needed to win, really, to, to ensure that he did, but he will. Um, just what Ben is, is, is saying about the ground. I mean, it, it's very rare nowadays that you get a national run on, you know, lively ground. Mm. Um, you know, they, they ensure, for, for safety reasons, they ensure that the ground is always on the soft side of good at, at, at least. Um, so I don't think, I, you know, particularly over that distance, I'd be surprised for, if conditions would be too quick for him. Mm. Uh, it's just whether he's good enough, that's all. Yeah, beforehand it perhaps didn't look the strongest classic chase. What did you make of those in behind? Captain Chaos, he's a little bit of a quirky horse in a way, but he was on a going day. Petite Power ran on strongly to be third. How would you rate that form? I thought it was I mean, it was pretty good, really. Yeah, you looked at, the, looked at it beforehand and you felt, well, I've seen better renewals of the classic chase than this. But it, Captain Chaos and Harry Skelton on Captain Chaos ensured it was a real true test. Mm. Uh, and I thought all, all uh, the right horses came out best. The conditional travelled really well for a long way. And in fact, he did really well to get back into it because he made a very bad mistake mm. the first fence down the back, but he just didn't get home. Um, he, he doesn't quite stay that far. So he's not a national horse. Uh, he doesn't have the stamina for Aintree. Uh, but yeah, Kimberlite County most definitely does. And um, yeah, he's, he's, he's got to be one for your shortlist, I think. OK, um, so definitely a Grand National contender then, but Binners warns about the ground. Two for Gold was another winner on the card in the Grade 2 chase, uh, a race that was won by Black Hercules back in uh, 2016. He went on to win the JLT. This horse looks more of an RSA type. Jimmy, I was really impressed with the way he battled back because um, Hold the Note looked to be going slightly the better and uh, you and I were on each of the horses. No surprise that you came out on top. Well, you know, we, we were on opposing sides for that race, weren't we? <laughs> Hold the Note is, is a, a really nice horse, another um, good jumper of Mick Channon's. Uh, so he, he's definitely got a future. Two for Gold, uh, he's a, a, a real grinder, a true stayer. Uh, so I would expect to see him in the National Hunt Chase, to be honest with you. I'd be surprised um, if he's got the class to be an RSA horse. Mm. Uh, but he does have the right credentials for the National Hunt Chase. You know, he, he, he likes being out in front, jumps well. Uh, and he's just very hard to get past. And, you know, as you saw, Hold the Note got past him, but um, two for the old just, just came back at him again and won nicely. Yeah. So, and I think he's a bit better than that as well. His, his uh, victory at Carlisle earlier in the season was very impressive indeed. Yeah. 
Um, Binners, I mean, two for gold. I think people are in danger of underestimating him a bit. I really like the performance. Yeah, you seem to think he's more of an RSA type, uh, Maddie, which is interesting. Uh, we make him 25 to 1 first show for that. Um, we, we, we believe that he'll be better over the longer trip of the National Hunt Chase and make him 12, half those odds for that, 12 to 1 first show. But uh, lovely performance for Kim Bailey. Um, I thought a, a, a horse to take one for the future that coming out of the race was roll again. He only managed to finish six or seven in the end, but I thought Charlie Deutsch did really well. A lovely horseman, Charlie Deutsch, and, and uh, he wasn't helped by the horse pulling. So if Venetia Williams can get him to stop pulling quite so hard, with Charlie Deutsch on board, I think he'll be winning soon. Yeah, I must admit, I'm a big Roll Again fan, but he's one of those you just have to be a bit careful of, don't you? Because he does tend to be so keen in his races and he can... Uh sort of chuck in the odd unconvincing jump but I think for me the notebook one was Watmore um got absolutely mullered around the home bend didn't jump the last two too particularly well but uh he stayed on well he could be one for handicaps in future uh let's have a look then at the other race um the graded race at Warwick it was over hurdles and it was won by Mossy Fenn in the end um the t Colin Tizard trained Harry Senior was taken out of this Jimmy so we were left sort of thinking what would have been without him in there. But there was still a good horse in Shan Blue who was favourite, but he just didn't have the staying power of Mossy Fenn. Yeah, Shan Blue didn't quite live up to um, market expectations, really. And, I thought and, he and went pretty fast. Yeah, he may, may have gone too fast. You're right, may have just you know been a bit keen and blew out a bit. I thought Keen On was disappointing. I was expecting better from him too, because uh, he had some good form at Sandown earlier in the season. And obviously, it was a, it was a great shame that Harry Senior, in the end, didn't take part. So... Yeah, good performance by Marcy Fenn. Um, stayed well, but I just felt a bit underwhelmed by that as a race, really. Uh, I was hoping uh, we would get one of those novices coming out, putting up a really good display. Um, and I'd be very surprised if, if we saw any of those winning a race at Cheltenham in March. Yeah, I'd be inclined to agree. Uh, Willoughby Court obviously won the race uh, before winning the Ballymore in 2017. Been as he's going to have various options at the Cheltenham Festival. I, I guess the Albert Bartlett's probably the, the race that a lot of punters would be looking at, if at all, for Mossy Fenn. Yeah, and Albert Bartlett's a possibility, Maddie. We, uh, Maddie, once again, we 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 have slightly different opinions to you. We thought he was a Ballymore horse and put him in that at twenty-five to one. Just going back to the classic chase winner, winner Kimberlite Candy. I've just noticed on our website he's he's into twenty to one um, this morning. So somebody clearly agrees with with James that it, it could come up softer at Aintree, and and we've seen a few quid for him. OK, that's interesting. Let's move on to Kempton now. And the headline act was Frodon getting back to something like his best form in that Sylvaniaco Conti chase. Bryony Frost aboard as per usual. And Jimmy, this horse had had ulcers. He hadn't looked the best in the old Roan and then in the Betfair chase. But this was more like it. Despite jumping uh, out to his left, he, he got the job done. Yeah, exactly. As you said, it, it was much more like it from Frodon. And he's uh, clearly better going left-handed by, by the way he jumps. Uh Top notch was disappointing. I, I, I felt he ran a bit below par. Um, so he, he's better than that. So that was a shame. But Frodon, interesting where they're going to go with him now. I mean, there's obviously this debate uh, with connections. Where would you go? Oh, I'd go, go Ryanair. Yeah. Definitely. I'd, I'd be surprised uh, if he'd stayed the Gold Cup trip, to be honest with you. I'd be surprised if he, if he was good enough to, to win the Gold Cup. Um, I can try and, and see how he goes in the Denman chase. But personally, I would just make a decision now and focus on the Ryanair because that was uh, such a good performance last year when he won it. Yeah, I think I'd agree. He's a funny horse, isn't he? Because we have to remember he's won a Cotswold chase, a really gruelling trial for the Gold Cup, but he does just appear... Not that trip, didn't he? I mean, it was only like a furlong less than the Gold Cup. Mm. Yeah. yeah, exactly, because yeah. I think they, they extended the distance on the day as well, didn't they? I'm not sure what happened, but I think they might have moved the rails out. So mm. Frodon will still have to wait and see as to his Cheltenham Festival target binners. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I think he's more of a Ryanair horse as well, Maddie. Um, and that's that's the way it looks like Paul Nichols is thinking at the moment. We'll we'll learn more at Newbury, but um, it was great to see Bryony back in the winner's enclosure at Kempton. She's just a breath of fresh air to the sport. And um, we went six to one for, uh, from ten to one for Frodham for the Ryanair. Um, and he's also in the uh, Gold Cup betting at quite a bit bigger than that. But um, where are we? Uh, He's 25, 25 to 1 for the Gold Cup, Maddie, uh, which uh, seems seems quite big, but I think he'll go Ryanair. 
Okay, yeah, interesting that Nichols said, I think it's down to the owner, Paul Vaught, he quite would like a horse in the Gold Cup, wouldn't we all? But perhaps the Ryanair is the more suitable race. Uh, now, probably the most dramatic race of the weekend was the Lanzarote Hurdle, with two horses, De Bestie Man and Notre Paris, coming down at the final flight, which left your selection, Jimmy Hill, uh, clear and away, <laughs> Burroughs Edge. Again, you're against me because I was on De Bestie Man, but a lot of people are suggesting that Burroughs Edge might have won anyway. He was coming with a fair old rattle. Yeah, I've, I, first of all, good to see both the horses and jockeys who followed the last get up. Um, that, you know, nasty fall of Notch Repair. But um, I thought Burroughs Edge was actually coming with a potentially winning run. Mm. Um, if he could have got up to Bessie Man's inside, I, I think he probably would have won. I think it was nine lengths back to the second in the end anyway. Uh, and it was a good performance, really, for him to win, even though he got lucky because. Um, Going down the back, I mean, he wasn't jumping at all, and he was well out of it. Nico de Boinville did really well to get him into the race, turning in, um, and he clearly stays well. Um, similar profile, actually, to uh, Michael Buckley's uh, Coral Cup winner, Spirit River. So, you know, same connections. I would think that's probably where they'll go with him, rather than going back over fences. Yeah, indeed. I mean, I think William Henry run the, won the race a couple of years ago, didn't he? And he yeah. went on to contest those Absolutely. sort of races. Yeah. He is interesting because, as you say, he had that fall... Uh, on his chasing debut, you get the impression that he's just a very talented horse that's just a bit of a shell at the minute, don't you? There's I think he's got come. plenty of ability. Yeah, mm. I really do. I noticed him at Kempton when he ran in Handicap Company last year off top weight. He ran a really good race and you knew he would improve uh, this season. Um, you know, you look at him, you think he's going to make a chaser, but um, that, that didn't work out at Ludlow when he fell. So I think they're going to stick to hurdles for the time being uh, and aim at the top handicaps. And obviously it's a long way out, but do you think he's the sort of horse that could win a, a Coral Cup? Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. If he's as good um, somewhere around Cheltenham as he is at Kempton, all his best form at the moment seems to be at Kempton, uh, that run last season and this win in the Lanzarote. But if he can transfer that form uh, to Presbury Park in March, uh, yeah, he's Definitely, I would think, for the home team anyway, he'd be one of the big hopes. Yeah, other notable winners at Kempton. Eric LaRouge, that was a big gamble, landed and finger on the switch as well for Millie Winnicott and Neil Moore-Holland. Nice to see them in the winner's enclosure. But let's move on to Punchestown then yesterday and carefully selected a uh, horse I'm sure plenty of people will have anti-post bets on. Um, he's been long-range sort of touted for the National Hunt Chase. Again, we mentioned two for gold. He could be another to go that way. He needs to qualify for it, but he was really impressive, I thought, although be it helped by the fall of Speakeasy at the last, Jimmy. Yeah, I think I think he had the race in the bag at that stage anyway. He's a proper out-and-out -out galloper, isn't he, carefully yeah. selected? I remember when I saw him in the champion bumper, uh, pulled Danny Mullins' uh, arms out that day, and... Uh, he fought turning in, he was going to completely blow out in, in the closing stages, kept going all the way to the line to, to finish second. I mean, he just obviously has loads of stamina. Uh, I was impressed with his jumping at Punchestown. I thought that was a nice performance. Uh, and I think it will be the National Hunt chase where he goes. I, I would expect Willie Mullins would have something more speedier for the RSA. Um, I think it would have to be pretty soft for, for uh, the RSA to be on the agenda for carefully selected. Uh, he's rightly heading the market for the National Hunt chase at the moment. I think he's the one to beat. Yeah, he certainly is. I mean, soft ground is key. And as you say, I mean, that was over two and a half. But I think it was it was obvious from the start that Paul Tanner was very keen to be positive on him and, and use his stamina, as he said. Uh, ben, is just refresh us with those at Cheltenham Festival prices. Yeah, Jim um, is quite right, Maddie. We make him the favourite for the National Hunt Chase. Now he's 92 favourite from six favourite. We went five initially after the race, but a few people came in and we trimmed that. And for the RSA, uh, listen, he's not that far away from the principles in the market, but he's 16 from 20, but a nice performance and looks a real nice staying chaser in future years to come. Yeah, Willie Mullins mentioned the 10-up novices chase over three miles at Navan. So if you were to run and win there, then that would obviously qualify him for that national hunt chase. Uh, what of Andy Dufresne then? He got out of jail by winning the Moscow Flyer, but it didn't look likely for a long way. Captain Guinness, uh, who won his only previous start, he ran a really interesting race. I, I think he could be a very, very good horse, Jimmy. But let's talk about the winner. Big sort of hype horse, um, and he got his career back on track here. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, he looks a really nice horse the way he travels and jumps. And I think he proved it here because uh, he was up against a good sort in Captain Guinness uh, and uh, dropping back in trip as well. So it was never going to be easy, but his jumping kept him in it. 
Uh, and I thought when he needed to battle hard, uh, he did that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he's definitely got his career back on track. I would actually stick at this distance with him for the moment. Um, I mean, in terms of Cheltenham, he'd probably be up against Envoy Allen if he ran in the Ballymore. I don't think Gordon Elliott would like to do that. So I think he's a supreme candidate. Um, and if the, the ground was on the soft side, you know, you know his stay of the trip, his jumping uh, would keep him in the race and he travels well. So he's a contender for that. Yeah, interestingly, Gordon Elliott's got abracadabras as well. So he's got a whole lot of yeah. talented novices to juggle, hasn't he? Uh, ben, as I mentioned just then, that I really like the run of Captain Guinness. I thought this was an excellent performance. He jumped electric. Um, he was a little bit too keen, but I think he could be a lively outsider for the Supreme. What does your market say? Yeah, we agree with you, Maddie. It was a lovely performance and it was a great race, actually. Nice spectacle. Um, Captain Guinness was 20 to 1 from 33 to 1 immediately after the race. Um, that was too big when he's now into 16 to 1, while Andy Dufresne um, didn't, didn't, didn't do himself any harm. And we've cut him as well. He's 12 from 16. Um, so, But both could run well and certainly get placed in the Supreme. Do you see him as a longer term prospect, Andy Dufresne, more of a chaser down the line or... Is he sort of a realistic candidate for the Supreme? Because I, th I don't know, I was sort of expecting a little bit more from him. Um, yeah, he ha well, he has been hyped up. Um, yeah. He was, he was considered, you know, a really exciting prospect from last season. But his form wasn't that amazing last season. I mean, it was good, but it, it wasn't uh, really top-notch stuff over bumpers. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I think his, his form's been very good this season. I think he probably went a bit too hard in front at, um, at Navin when he got beaten by latest exhibition and obviously on that form you know he's he's got a bit to find with abacadabra uh if they both ran in the supreme um yeah i mean i i think he is a a, a proper chasing prospect for the future but he's got enough ability to win at Cheltenham this year okay um, you know he is a, he is a contender he's got enough class yeah, he certainly has. will be interesting to see what Gordon Elliott does with all of his horses, won't it? We'll have to wait and see nearer the time. Uh, that's it for the review section of this podcast. Uh, we'll be back just after the break. I'm Jose Mourinho. I know a thing or two about being special. Finding pastel de natas in a London cafe? Special. Winning the little jackpot on Paddy Power Games? Not special. Understood, Jose. Yes, someone wins an average £40,000 jackpot every single day. So if you win, don't think you're special. Daily Jackpots by Paddy Power Games. Jackpots must be awarded by 11pm and vary from day to day. Jackpot is shared with other operators available on selected games. T's and C's at paddypower.com, 18plusbegumbleware.org. Welcome back to this Monday postcast then. And now is our opportunity to look ahead to the big race on Saturday. It's the Clarence House Chase at Ascot and... Uh, under So has won this three times in 2016, 2017, 2018, and he's set to face Deffy Desoy in what looks an absolutely mouth-watering clash. Jimmy, I mean, from my perspective, I'm just, I love both of these horses, but isn't it great we get to see horses like Under So still performing at the top of the game uh, when they're as old as he is? Yeah, Under So is an amazing horse. Um, I mean, I, I, in his younger days, I thought one or two people had him a bit overrated. I mean, I've always thought he's very good, but I know. I, wasn't quite sure he was outstanding, but just over the years, what has been amazing is how consistent he's been. He's continued mm. to perform right at the top level, uh, race after race. Um, I can't remember him ever running a bad race, to be honest with you. I mean, he's just so consistent. Yeah. Tries very hard, wonderful jumper, um, and it's great to see him at Ascot again. Yeah, and this will test Deffy Desoy's champion chase credentials, unlike probably any race we've seen so far, would you argue? Yeah, well, you know, if he's slightly off his game, Deffy... Um, you know Undersco is, is going to be on his game because he always is. So, yeah. uh, you, you know, I think at the prices, I'd probably side with, with, with the older horse for, for that reason. Um, you know, De Deffy uh, has been known to run the odd stinker from time to time. I don't think he ran well at Ascot over hurdles a couple of seasons back. And that was a time that when he wasn't right. that coral hurdle, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, on, on form, you obviously slightly favour Deffy. And, you know, he's, he's a younger horse. But... And so it's just incredible. He just, you know, keeps doing it time after time. He certainly does. He's versatile, isn't he? And if it does end up being soft ground, then that's going well, to suit that, him. That's his ideal, isn't it? Mm. Two miles, soft ground. Um, even at his age, he's still got loads of pace and he can really put them to the sword. So, you know, yeah, uh, he, he will have his ideal conditions on Saturday by the looks of it. Yeah, I mean, Deffy Dussoy, his Cheltenham target seems quite obvious now that they're going to go for the champion chase. Under so, I mean, we say he's best over two miles, but he is a Ryanair winner. With him at this age, what would you do at Cheltenham, or is that me being a bit unfair? Uh, probably go for the 
go for the Ryanair again. Mm. Um, I did. I actually don't think he's as good over two and a half as he is. I don't think he quite gets two and a half. I know yeah. he won the Ryanair, but it was a, a weak Ryanair, and he only just won. Superb um, ha- having that, having wasn't looked it? having looked for all the world as if he was going to win easily, turning in, he uh, won by a few lengths in the end. Uh, so yeah, I mean. If you are going to go to Cheltenham with him, I think unless it turned up really soft in the champion chase, that the Ryanair would just be the race he'd have to go for. But uh, he doesn't. If, if he doesn't, you know, win at Cheltenham again, or doesn't run that well at Cheltenham, I don't. I don't think it really matters. I mean, mm. he doesn't yeah. owe anyone anything. No. He's been amazing. Doesn't take anything away from what has been a, a magical legacy under So. I mean, hopefully we can still see him uh, this season and maybe even next. Who knows? Uh, Abinas, just refreshers on your prices then, if not for Saturday for the big races at Cheltenham. Well, we've got Saturday's uh, market up, Maddie. We make Deffy du Soleil four to five favourite, and so six to four, seven Janika, and it's twenty to one bar. Um, apologies if anyone could hear a dog barking in the first section of the show. He seems to shut up now, so I, I apologise about that. Um, I think Jimmy summed the race up really well, Maddie. There, and I, and I, I couldn't agree with him more. He's, he's won the Clarence House by seven lengths, five lengths twice, including when it was rerun at Cheltenham. Um, he only got beaten in the neck by Deffy Dussoy in the Tingle Creek, and, and at the prices, four to five Deffy and six to four Earn Dussault. I'd definitely um, be back in Earn Dussault just because of the price, really. Yeah, yeah, I think I'd be inclined to agree. Um, Deffy Dussoy, I mean, it's interesting. He has to be delivered right at the right time, doesn't he? Whereas under so we know exactly what he's going to do. He's going to go out there and and uh, be enthusiastic and give it his all, Jimmy. Yeah, Deffy's um, territory is Cheltenham, really. I mean, he, he always seems to show his best yeah. form there. So, yeah, against a, a horse of the quality of under so, you know, as Ben has said, there was only a neck between him and the Tingle Creek. He's got to be slightly vulnerable, hasn't he? Yeah, and there are more horses in the race than just those two. We are dubbing it as a bit of a match, but of course, anything can happen in these contests. Uh, good racing uh, as well at Ascot. They have the Holloway's Hurdle, um, which I haven't mentioned yet, and a good uh, graded race for mares. Um, but we'll go on to Haydock next. Uh, they stage a good few strong races as well. There could be some more Cheltenham uh, clues on display. The Peter Marsh, we've got the uh, Champion Hurdle trial. There's a Supreme trial as well. But let's talk about that Champion Hurdle trial because... This could be quite informative. It's still a market which is a bit all over the place. Pentland Hills, a lot of people took him out of the international hurdle as the one to watch going forward, Jimmy. And he looks likely to go for that new one, Unibet hurdle. Uh, Nicky Henderson's got Call Me Lord in there as well. But I think maybe Pentland Hills could be the one he's going to run. I think that's what he's been saying, isn't he? That he's going to run Pentland Hills in this race. First of all, let's hope Haydock's on on Saturday because there is a lot of rain forecast for, oh, don't for this say week. That. <laughs> uh, so it, it is going to be um, very wet. But um, if it's on, uh, I, I would personally uh, look to find something against Pentland Hills. Um, I think, you know, two miles on heavy ground round Haydock, mm. that would be my much most testing conditions he's raced on. He's only a five-year-old, only just turned five. So uh, I prefer something like Bally Andy who actually beat him at Cheltenham uh, before Christmas. Yeah. Um, of course, Nigel Twiston Davis has won this race many times with the new one over the last few years, and he looks to have got Bally Andy back. Uh, ran really well in the Christmas hurdle as well at Kempton. Uh, he'll handle the ground definitely. Uh, so at the prices, I think I would I would prefer him to to Pentland Hills, who I still think's got a fair bit to prove. I mean, he's 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 short enough in the Champion Hurdle market for me. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. Ribble Valley was in there, the novice. Uh, he didn't uh, win at Ascot last time, but he was well fancied. Are we in danger of underestimating Corniston Lad, the fighting fifth winner? Obviously, Boover Dare, he had that injury, probably wasn't running up to form when he sort of finished second, but it was still a very good performance from a progressive horse. Yeah, well, I suppose Silver Street gave the former beast, didn't he, at Kempton when he finished second in the Christmas hurdle? I, I do wonder whether Silver Street ran his race at Newcastle. I think we're pretty sure that Bouverdair didn't. I mean, he, yeah. he was obviously injured. Um, it was a funny contest for me personally. Um, and you know, Lady Buttons, of course, uh, has boosted the form as well. Yeah. Uh, but mm, whether those horses in behind really ran their race, Cornerstone Lad really shouldn't have been winning that on, on all known form. I know he won that Weatherby the time before, and he is progressive. But uh, unless he gets a very soft lead again here, and they they just, I'd be surprised if they gave him 10 lengths at the start or something. But if they did, maybe he could nick it. But, yeah. Um, you mentioned Ribble Valley. Um, I mean, I, I have to say the novices this season have been really impressing me. And Ribble Valley was disappointing at Ascot. I was expecting... Um, 
more he was for him well he was, fancied to beat Master was, Debonair, yeah, wasn't he? He was, um, because the time before that at Weatherby, he had some really good horses, well beaten in behind him. So it's interesting that they've, they've entered him for this. Um, if there was to be a surprise, uh, it could be him. You know, yeah. I w- wouldn't rule that out. Yeah, I do like it when connections take a chance with a novice when a race is open and as prestigious as the champion hurdle. Uh, obviously, Ember Allen and Honeysuckle, she's not a novice, but hopefully they're going to feature in some sort of way in the champion hurdle picture. We'll find out what their te- targets are soon. Ribble Valley, I thought he was very, very keen at Ascot and he just seemed to tank a little bit. Maybe that would be against him again in heavy conditions. Yeah, they're, they're likely to go a faster pace, I would afford, at Haydock uh, than they did at Ascot. I mean, Ascot was virtually unraceable that day. They went absolutely no pace at all and it didn't suit him. Mm. Uh, so it could just be that they've kind of felt, well, he blew, blew out that day. Let's just forget that um, and just, just throw him in the deep end and see how he goes. They obviously, you know, rate him very highly. Uh, no, he, he's, he's interesting. They went a good gallop at uh, Weatherby and if they did the same at Haydock, I could see him running really well. Yeah, so Surprising a few, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see that as well. Uh, Binners, update us on some of the prices then. Well, we haven't got prices for this one until Monday evening, Maddie. But um, I, I really agree with you about uh, both of you about Ribble Valley. Um, I, I think he might have just come up against a good horse in Master Debonair at Ascot last time, who was very well back that day, by the way. Um, and but I, Nicky will probably run him run him in the Rossington Main Novices Hurdle at Haydock on on the same card, I would imagine. Um, but the fact that he's that he's even entered him in this race shows the regard he's got for the horse. Um, and Maddie, you asked if if we're underestimating Cornerstone Land. I think we are actually. He's he's rated as high as any of these, apart from Call Me Lord on official ratings. Um, you guys seem to think that Pentland Hills is Nicky Henderson's number one for the race. So I think Cornerstone Lab will will, will run another good race for Mickey Hammond. Yeah, I agree with you, Binners. He's always the sort of horse who's going to be underestimated with those connections, isn't it? Hopefully he can give them another good run for their money. Uh, Before we go for a break, I think it's probably worth just running through the champion hurdle market and getting your thoughts on it. Uh, What have you got for us, Binners? Does Epitont head the market still? Does indeed, Maddie. Yeah, that's a great idea. I had the champion hurdle betting waiting for you uh, as we were talking about that. Epitonti at 72 favourite, Pentland Hills. Hopefully we'll find out more on Saturday, 7-1 to one, along with Saldier. Then it's 10-1, to one, Classical Dream and Sharjah and Honeysuckle, Honeysuckle. And as for Mickey Hammond's contender, Cornerstone, uh, he's, he's, we, we, just, we don't give him any chance at Cheltenham. 40-1, to one, Maddie. Yeah, OK then, Jimmy. Obviously the, the Dublin Racing Festival entries are coming out as well, so the picture could get clearer, it could get murkier even still. But what do you think of the, the race at the moment? Um. Personally, I think it's one of the most sub- below par champion hurdles that I've seen in a long time. Uh, I, I can't remember so few horses uh, that I've actually fancied in the race. Um, I have had a bet in it. Um, Who have you backed? Uh, one of the horses that Bins didn't mention in the market because it's, it's much further down. Uh, and what we, one I mentioned earlier, which is Silver Streak, who was um, third in the champion hurdle last year. And I think it's, it's going back all the way to 2012. Horses who've been placed in the champion hurdle previously, all renewals since 2012, we've had a horse in the first three who, who has actually been placed in the champion hurdle oh, previously. Right. So, you know, it, it's that form is obviously as good as any uh, past renewals. So I do think it's worth looking at last year's race. I know he was well beaten by the winner of Spider Len, but, you know, he was only just beaten by Mellon, who finished second in the race previously. He had some good horses like Vadana Blue in behind him. Uh, he ran well in the Christmas hurdle. He, he always runs really well at Cheltenham. And I think some uh, are pr- still pricing him up at 33 to 1, which I think is too big. Because mm. um, I think, you know, if you want, want a horse who you feel is is going to run well again, that he's definitely going to run, well gonna at run it in the before, race, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, personally, I think he prefers better ground as well. It was it, The ground was soft enough for him last season. Um, I could see him going well at a big price. Um, of, of the principles, I mean, if it wasn't for Repertant's uh, poor run at, at the festival last year, mm. I would say, you know, seven to two is, isn't actually a bad price about it because she did win that race at Kempton so easily. Yeah. I think that's as, as solid a trial this season as any. Interesting to see if Honeysuckle goes to the Irish champion hurdle mm. um, because she's definitely a horse who could be up to champion hurdle class. I mean, she, she's kept winning her races. She's won a grade one now, the Hatton's Grace, um, against the boys. Uh, so I know it's over two, uh, two and a half miles, but two and a half mile horses tend to run really well in the champion hurdle. Some tend to win it. 
Mm. Uh, so she does run it at Leopardstown. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see how she goes. Yeah, exactly. It's been a funny old year, hasn't it? Bouvedere, obviously, he's been ruled out. Classical Dream, he was a strong fancy. He just doesn't be seem to up to anything this season. Uh, and we've had various other horses fall by the wayside and have different targets as well. Binners, who would your fancy be at this stage? Well, I, I, I think Willie Mullins Shahjar is as good as any, Maddie. Um, Jimmy's point about horses being placed was interesting. That uh, his his one silver streak is twenty five to one. I remember Theatre Well kept getting placed be, behind the great Istra, Istabrak a few years ago. Um, but yeah, for me, Sharjah, he was very well back when he won at Leopardstown last time, despite uh, Classical Dream being uh, the, one of the favourites for the race. And Sharjah certainly didn't let himself down. He seems to have such a tough customer. And, and um, double figure, the, the 20 to 1 prices about him have long gone now and he's 10 to 1 I think he'll give punters a run for their money yeah he certainly will if it's good ground as well that'll suit him won't it we'll take a break now before we have a look at some of the action this week what's my horse's handicap the fact that you're bucking him Everyone loves a newbie that's why Paddy Power Games are giving all new customers 60 free spins on daily jackpot games new Paddy Power Games customers only one per customer T's and C's apply 18 plus begumbleware.org now it's time to look at the racing midweek then. Some interesting contests this week coming up. Uh, Nicky Henderson tends to do very well at Newbury. He's got talented uh, Shishkin in on Wednesday. He could run in Novice Hurdle. Uh, there's a listed bumper at Market Raisin on Thursday as well as the Somerset National at Wincanton. That's also on Thursday. So probably worth keeping an eye out for a few horses. Jimmy, who's your next best? I've got a, got a couple actually who are, who are my next Wonderful. best. Um one horse who I hope was going to run a, a couple of weeks ago and didn't. Uh, she's been declared for uh, Doncaster on Tuesday. Storm Goddess. Uh, pretty well yes. treated on her best form. Um, she, she's five pound lower than she was at the start of the season uh, and hasn't run too badly. Uh, these are her, her, her type of conditions. I think, you know, providing it's not too soft for her, I think she's she's an eye catcher at Doncaster. That's in the 350. Um, and on Wednesday in the 325 at Newbury, um, Scotch down can't be bad. Can't be badly treated. I mean, he was he was rated 135 over hurdles. Uh, his chase mark currently is 122. Ran very well at Sandown over fences last year, so he has he has some good form over fences as well. Um, didn't run well first time out, but he, he always does tend to come on a bundle for his uh, first run of the season. So I'm expecting uh, a better effort from him, um, and he can leave his reappearance effort behind. Okay, so Scotchtown and Storm Goddess then for Jimmy. Uh, Binners, whereabouts are you racing this week? Uh, well, Maddie, I'm hoping that Storm Brendan Duke doesn't take out Fairy House on Tuesday. We lost Punches Town on Monday. Uh, in the 145, the two-mile rated hurdle, a horse called Future Proof for Noel Mead. Um, he met with interference last time in the catchly named Paddy Power Games. Don't you think your special handicap hurdle at Leopardstown over Christmas? Um, still a maiden over hurdles, but eight runs and five places. And a bit of heavy ground at Fairy House would may well suit him as, it, as he, he won his maiden on the flat for Jer Lyons on, on a heavy surface. Okay, excellent. Now it's time to get those midweek naps. This will not be beaten. Once again, I'll go to you first. Jimmy, who are you most keen on this week? Uh, also most keen on, uh, if it runs on Friday, uh, the three o'clock at Musselburgh, a horse called Kajaki. Uh, finished second at uh, Doncaster last time, being put up uh, six pounds for that. Um, finishing second to um, a really exciting type of J.P. McManus is called Pajero. Um, I thought that was a good race for the grade. He's up in class here, but this looks a, a weak race for the grade, whereas I thought last time out um, he was running in, in a, a better quality affair, actually, even though it was a class four. Um, he seems to have improved for the switch to Nicky Richards. Uh, plenty of rain about this week, but I don't think the soft ground will bother him and very genuine. So good Jackie in the three o'clock at Musselburgh. Superb. And um, Paul Binfield. I'm going to go for Stolen Silver of Nigel Twiston Davis in, in the 145 at Newbury on Wednesday, Maddie. He does have another option in the Rossington Main at ADOC on Saturday. I hope he goes to Newbury. No doubt your Lambourne correspondent, James Byrne, is pouring through the form book as we speak. But um, this one was second to Chantry House last month at Cheltenham uh, when the winner was very heavily supported on his timber bow. Um, stolen, and st stolen Silver is clearly well regarded by the Twiston Davis team. Uh, he's 16 to 1 for the Betfair hurdle and I think he'll be a very tough customer to beat in Novice Company next time out. 
That's very interesting. Thanks for that, Binus. That's all we've got time for today. Uh, hopefully, plenty of Cheltenham clues will be on display at the weekend, so fingers crossed for that. If you do need some more help, though, Bruce and the team will be back on Friday to review the weekend's card in a lot of detail. As always, make sure to rate, review and subscribe, and I'll see you again next week. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week, and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply, 18 plus,